Hi everyone, this is Duncan from the podcast Under the Stairs. This particular video you're checking out just now has the archival recording attached to it. The archival recording is from our podography, I think that's the term that we use, um, and it will feature reviews of movies that fall under the 88 Films Italian Collection series. Now, the vast majority of reviews we've done over the last five years have been in audio format and published on our RSS feed for the podcast. We are transitioning over to give you access to all those reviews right here on YouTube under a playlist. Now, we're doing that because we're about to do our first video recording of E88 Films Italian collection release, that being Tentacles. So there's plenty of opportunity to delve into the back catalogue of the reviews here. And if you like what you hear, then please hit subscribe on the channel, leave your comments below, and uh, check out the rich catalogue of over 1,200 episodes we have on podcasts under the stairs on any podcatching device or Spotify that you use. So stick around, enjoy the episode, and I'll speak to you very soon. Oh, hai fatto bene a venire. Finalmente è pronto. Sarà sicuramente un successo. Per ora sono l'unico che lo ha letto. Adesso bisogna farlo conoscere. Che bella veste, tela e oro. Sì. Ma te, te, sei capace di vendere? Beh, veramente non, non saprei di cosa si tratta. È un vecchio manoscritto. Ci abbiamo un tesoro fra le mani. Se te sei capace di vendere, facciamo i soldi a palate. Misteri, leggende e delitti dei castelli emiliani. Profezie, cabale e stravaganze. Misteri, delitti e profezie delle antiche famiglie nobili dell'Emilia Romagna. Ho capito. Ma a chi si vende? Mm. Tieni, è un elenco completo di tutte le famiglie citate nel libro. Se non sei buono di venderlo a loro, ti puoi sparare. Adesso vieni qua, ti faccio vedere. Quante copie ne vuoi per cominciare? Eh, facciamo tutte. Tutte? Sì. Bene, e i soldi ce li hai? Ma a cosa servono i soldi? I soldi? Ma che cosa credi che ti dia i libri così sulla parola? Ma se vuoi prenderlo devi pagare in anticipo. Ce li hai i soldi? Sì, sì. Tutto qui. Con questi solo due te ne do, guarda. Eh, facciamo due. Sei contenta? <ride> Molto. Bene, dai, dati da fare. E che Dio ci assista. Ok. Mm. Welcome back, ladies and gents. You've just heard the trailer for All Deceased Except the Dead. This is disc number 75 in the Italian collection. There is one title after this currently available, disc number 76, and I know there's a few in the pipeline, but what we're going to do is we're going to defer Italian collection now off into January, because no point in doing the next one when the, I believe, 77 and 78 are coming out very early next year so what we'll do is we'll put a pin in this series until closer to the time that we can run through a few movies as part of this one so this is your last one of the year so and it's directed by pretty amazing director so we will find out how we got on right now the blurb as listed on the 88 films website says when dante a dealer of rare books and noble families arrives at castle zanotti to relate a strange prophecy that states that a hidden treasure will be revealed only when the nine members of the family are dead, he discovers that one of the household has already passed away. Directed by the critically acclaimed Pippi Avati, who also helmed features The House with Laughing Windows from 1976 and the wonderfully creepy Zera from 1983, All Souls Except the Dead, a.k.a. Tutti... <laughs> I was going to say Tutti Frutti. Uh, Tutti Defunti Trani Il Morti, 
from 1977 as he skillfully presented piece of mid-70s Italian horror combining the aesthetics of Giallo with Agatha Christie style murder mystery. The deets on this one. This one features a fresh pressed gloss slipcase featuring new artwork by Rich Davies on the first pressings alone. It includes a booklet with notes by Andrew Graves, a brand new 2K transfer from the original negatives, high definition Blu-ray 1080p presentation and 185 one aspect ratio, the original Italian LPCM 2.0 soundtrack, newly translated English subtitles, audio commentary with film journalist Troy Holworth and Nathaniel Thompson and Italian cinema expert Eugenio Ercolani. Among the Dead, an interview with Pupi Avati, The Avati Factory, an interview with Antonio Avati, The Eyes of Horror, an interview with Giulio Pizzarani, When Bob Meet Pupi, an interview with Steno Tonelli, and The Reversible Sleeve, with brand new artwork by Rich Davies and the original Italian artwork. This was released back in September. It is region unlocked, so it's available on AB and C. The picture format is HD 1080p 185.1, audio format is 2.0. The language is all Italian, um, so there is no English track on this one. The certification is 15. The runtime is 1 hour and 44 minutes, and there is one disc here as well. So I had never seen of this one, I would never heard of this one either, if I'm being honest. Once again, my knowledge of Avati is, is slim. It, it really is, there's no getting around that one. I think we all, for the most part, and for the longest part, those that didn't deep dive online, assumed that The House with Laughing Windows was this kind of one, one and done of the horror genre of someone who was clearly a very talented director. And it turns out there's a lot more, and it turns out these labels are putting them out. Like I said earlier, I'm all about that. Keep doing the gods work here, 80 films. The If I'm honest, I don't think this is the best of the three. I think it does have some issues. Uh, those issues involve some of the at times offbeat humour, which I don't think always lands, and sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. Um, and I, I, it feels a little bit cheap. We're going to swing back to that in a second. Um, after we talk about the movie kind of proper and then we'll come back to, to discuss some of these aspects. At its basics, this movie is, as it kind of states here, a kind of Agatha Christie murder mystery. I mean, you will have seen this done a hundred times before, maybe even more than that. The weird thing is we're now in this kind of weird time period where these sorts of movies have found a, a resurgence. You could look at Knives Out as being almost a catalyst for that. But we're now, there was a recent one with Sam Rockwell that just dropped, which kind of murder mystery who done it. We've had those two uh, Kenneth Branagh Poirot movies that have come out once again, kind of levying things that way. And Knives Out has a sequel that drops on um, December on Netflix, uh, Glass Onion. And so, like, there's a kind of a, a renewed interest in the old kind of old fashioned murder mystery who done it. But you know, the like the seventies were like a wash. Like specifically, Italian cinema was a wash with these. In fact, the Giallo is like a kind of a weird, heretical sort of family member of those better constructed uh, Agatha Christie novels. And a lot of times, they're actually just complete rip-offs or um, kind of loose adaptations, as I believe the directors would use, being homage rather than just ripping off um, so it's weird to kind of come back to this now and see that there is a kind of you know not only there's a renewed interest just now this movie probably plays a lot better now than it would even three years ago because of that kind of uptick in interest also the uptick in interest in Italian cinema which is you know a collection like the Italian collection will be a part of but obviously the, the kind of drive of just an interest in directors and I'm, I'm getting way off to the side here suffice to say this movie is for the most part a nuts and bolts murder mystery who done it in a big house film it, like the narrative follows a lot of the beats that you have seen before it's for the most part pretty predictable and even the the reveal of actually what is going on which I won't spoil here for those that aren't maybe necessarily as initiated in the formulas or these sort of movies wasn't a huge shock to me there is a kind of almost cross between the Inspector Clouseau meets Hercule Poirot-esque character at the centre here 
and we have like a a, a, a kind of also insert giallo type killer as well. Now, like I said before, you could argue that early giallos and I've got a lot of giallos actually in the 70s are playing off that Agatha Christie formula. So is it, you know, we're inserting giallo into this or is that a case of giallo inserts itself into this? I don't know. It depends which way you want to look at it. I thought it, it felt a bit cheap, if I'm honest. The, the camera work um, and the design of uh, the House of Laughing Windows is really quite exceptional for the budget. Zedder feels like money was spent on that movie as well. This one kind of feels like maybe not a lot of money was spent on it and or the cinematographer wasn't as good or wasn't as sharp or interested or invested or had the same materials that he did just one year before with The House of Laughing Windows. It's a surprisingly... It lacks that kind of dreamlike flurry that really sets Avati a kind of a stark contrast to like the way that someone like a Fulcher or a Martino would handle it, um, or even on Argento to an extent. So, I'd, like, I found that times they were trying to insert a weird sort of humour in here, and I understand why they're trying to do that, but it didn't necessarily work for me. I also think this movie is a bit baggy, and I mean, Zedder wasn't the tightest movie I'd seen, and neither is The House of Laughing Windows, but those movies have that kind of ethereal dreamlike wooziness that kind of absorbs you in. And with this movie not having that, an hour and 44 minutes felt long. There was a point in the middle of this movie where I literally hit pause, expecting to be, you know, well into the last third of the movie, and it was sitting about an hour, and I was like, oof, there's still 44 minutes of this to go. And it, it does, I mean, it, it dutifully ramps up towards the end like a lot of these movies do, but it just kind of felt like it was dragging its feet. However, on the flip side of that, what it does get right, I love the deaths in this. I actually did like the characters, even though I felt at times the dialogue was a bit trite. Um, I did enjoy the characters. They all felt like their own individual people, so it wasn't like amalgamations of things you've seen before, notwithstanding the kind of Clouseau Poirot-esque sort of character at the centre. On top of that as well, I actually like the design of the movie, whilst I feel the filming itself is maybe lacking the panache of some of, of his other work. I thought the design of the movie and the scope was kind of cool. It really does capture that big old house, people are dying sort of vibe. So I, I enjoyed that as well. I thought that was done. The score um, sits beautifully in this movie. It's not too ostentatious, but it doesn't lack drama that's fully fully in there as well so enjoyed that so i, I kind of felt like i was kind of felt almost like this felt like a first movie it's weird the orders here if someone had told me that you know all deceased except the dead was the first movie and then the house of laughing windows was his second movie and then zedder was his third movie i could see the clear progression here but this one weirdly feels like a step back um in a way which, I mean, it's not a terrible movie by any stretch of the imagination. It's just I've come from two movies that I feel really high on and then watch this one and maybe if I hadn't seen those ones, this one would score a bit better. As always, um, the transfer is really good. Uh, they've always been great on these Italian collection movies. I think 88 Films have locked that in really, really well. And I've checked out all the interviews which were really insightful. You get a ton of information here, especially if you want to know a little bit more about Avati. There's there's loads in here. And as always I kind of toggled on and off in several parts. The audio commentary with Troy Holworth, Nathaniel Thompson and Eugenio Ercolani. Uh, which was excellent. Those guys know their shit and they'll keep you, they'll keep you right you get these little kind of anecdotal things from what I was hearing that was kind of fun as well. So yeah, I, I don't think this is necessarily a, a great triumph for Avati in terms of his, his cinematic back catalogue, but it's a good movie. I mean, it's not going to, it's not, I didn't dislike it in any way, shape or form. It just wasn't the same level as what I'd seen around about and that kind of, you know, it's going to have a, a hit on me the same way that when I sit down and watch a movie like The Card Player, I'm like that, this is, this is kind of C-level Argento. This kind of feels a little a bit like kind of B-level, C-level of I, if I'm honest. It's just my opinion. So when it comes to grades, I gave this one a 3 out of 5. I liked it. I couldn't go any higher than that. Maybe try re-watching this in a while and see if I come up on it. Maybe I'm going in with the, this guy is a modern genius, 
um, and then watching it and going, this doesn't feel like his work. I, I don't know. And maybe there's a more interesting story out there as to how some of my opinions have landed the way they have. I don't know. That's maybe for another time. <laughs>